Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language, currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, previously at UCLA, and in August of 2017, very happy to be moving to the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm back today with another one of my videos about a topic in Norse language and myth. And what I want to go over today are the meanings behind many of the names that have become famous through the Norse myths. The Old Norse language uses a system of naming that is often fairly transparent, so it's usually reasonably clear what a name of a person or a god or a place means. Uh, this does not necessarily mean that the meaning of the name always imparts some communication about uh, the qualities of the person the name has. For instance, when a child is born, the parents might name a girl Hildegun, or reverse English two elements, Gunnhildr. Uh, this is a girl's name that just means battle, battle. It's two words for battle. This isn't necessarily the parents saying the daughter is going to be extremely warlike, or say that a son is named something like Hjorolver, sword wolf. Well, what does a sword wolf mean exactly? It's just two elements that are common in names, using weapons, predatory animals, words for battle and war, being put together fairly arbitrarily. With gods, however, their names may have a little bit of a deeper meaning because God's names can change over time, and the names that we see at the layer of Norse myth that we actually have attested in the two books called Edda, the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, uh, these names may actually give us some information about how uh, believers uh, thought of these gods. So to begin with, the main family of the gods in Norse myth are the Asir, the singular one god of this family is Os. Asir is from an Indo-European root that means uh, something to do with royalty or godhood. We see the same root popping up in India and in Sanskrit in the word Asura, which is a almost demon-like figure. And then in Iran, in Avestan, Ahura, which is a positive uh, deific figure. We also see the same root in Hittite and the word Hasus, which means king. So this is a very old root. Uh, word for kingship or gods. You can also see this word in the name of their home, the Os Garther. Os is just this word again in the singular without its grammatical ending, the second S. And then Garther is an enclosure. So Os Garther is the enclosed place within which the Asir gods live. There are also the gods known as the Vanir. There is not a universally accepted explanation for what this name means, but it may be connected with ultimately the same root as we see in Latin, Venus. So these may be gods associated originally with joy or love. That would kind of make sense because they are more agricultural, fertility-oriented gods. They live or come from a place called Vana Hamer. Vana is just the plural possessive form of Vanir, so of the Vanir. Hamer, which is cognate, comes from the same root as English home, means home. So this is the home or world Hamer also can have that larger sense of, of a world or realm of the Vanir. The Asir and Vanir are opposed by the Jotnar. This is usually translated in English by giant, but as we've seen in many of the myths I've related on this channel, the giants are not a different species than the gods, they're more like a competing family. A singular one giant is a Jotun, and the giants live in Jotun Hamer, home of the giants or Jotnar. The word Jotun comes from the same root as the Old English word ant, which is used by J.R.R. Tolkien, of course, to mean a species of giant tree people. Ant or Jotun comes from an Old Germanic root that means to eat. So in some sense, at least, the giants are originally thought of as eaters, consumers, maybe cannibals, although there aren't many stories of them being cannibals in Old Norse myth. Now looking at the names of specific gods. Odin is a pretty clear case. There is an adjective odr in Old Norse that means mad, with the same ambiguity as English mad. This can mean both crazy and angry. And then in is simply a suffix that's specifying it's the. So Odin is the mad one, either furious or crazy. This adjective odr is also especially associated with uh, states of ecstatic trance, so you could also think of him as being sort of uh, 
possessed, taken beyond himself in some kind of uh, mystical sense. The name of Thor, the god of thunder, notice that I've spelled it with the Old Norse fashion using the letter Thorn instead of TH. I have videos that explain how this letter works, as well as videos that explain the Old Norse pronunciation that I'm using here, which is different from modern Icelandic pronunciation, which I also have a video about. I'll link that in the video description and in annotations below. Anyway, Thor is cognate with the English word thunder. This is just the English word thunder in its Old Norse form. So the god of thunder is named thunder. Baldr, the the most beautiful of the gods, who is killed treacherously by Loki. His name is related to the English word bold. And Hodr, the blind brother that Loki tricks into killing him, his name is a old word for battle. Odin is married to Frigg, which simply means love. Frigg is the same word that is in the root of English friend. So your friend is originally the one who is loving as opposed to your fiend who is hating you. Thor is married to Siv, which simply means peace. Her name is also in the root word of English sibling, the people you're at peace with because they're your blood relatives. Frigg may or may not be the same person as Freya, the goddess of love. Freya and her brother Froer, an agricultural god, their names both contain an old word for uh, lord or lady, person in authority. This is from the same root as the German word Frau, which means woman, or originally more like noble woman. So originally their names are probably titles just like Lord and Lady. They may have originally had different names. In fact, it's fairly likely that Freud may originally be the same person as Freud, and so that's more like her name, and this is more like a title. Although in most of the Old Norse texts that we actually have, they're kept very separate. And Freud's original name may have been Ingvi. We see that name for him fairly often. Freud and Freud are the children of Njordr, the god of the sea. His name contains a root that simply means man. So, uh, for instance, the Latin name Nero contains this root. You also see this as the common word for man in, uh, in Indic languages. So, uh, Nar is that root. So, he's man of some kind. Skadi, his wife, who is not the mother of uh, his children, but Skadi has a name that simply means injury or damage. It's not surprising since she starts out as a giant, one of the enemies of the gods, before she's married to Njordr. Two more mysterious ones are the nemeses Heimdallr and Loki. Loki is, it, on the surface, it definitely looks like it may be related to the English word lock. This is an old root for to close something up. Loki does have his lips sewn shut after he betrays a dwarf in a gamble that they make. And possibly his name could refer to something like that. Heimdallr is very difficult to piece out. The first part of his name is clearly Heim, as in home or world, but the dollar has resisted explanation, and there's a lot of different explanations. This could be related to an old English word that means bright or shining. It could also be related to a word that means a tree trunk. So is he something like the world bright or home bright, or is he something like the world tree? It almost seems like his name would be the name of Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil, by the way, the world tree, means Odin's horse. Yggdr is one of Odin's other names, and Drasil means horse. So the name of the world tree is literally Old Norse gallows humor. It is the tree that Odin rode, as in he hung himself from it. So a strange explanation for the name of the tree, but very much in accord with the fatalistic sense of humor that we see throughout Old Norse literature. I hope this has been somewhat useful and informative for you. If you enjoy these videos, I hope that you'll check out some of my other videos about Norse language and myth, and I also hope that you will take a look at my translation of the Poetic Edda, which presents the stories of the Norse gods and heroes that survived from the Middle Ages in a contemporary, readable form. I also make all this information available for free on my YouTube channel, but I do have a Patreon page where you can support what I do if you want to help me continue it, and I do have rewards for subscribers that you can read about there. For now, wishing you all the best.